Hey everybody. So in this video, I'm not even sure where to start, but I guess I could start with the fact that homeschooling is a very humbling experience. I feel like especially for somebody like me who I just love to research curriculum, I love to kind of deep dive and understand like different styles of learning as well as different techniques and curriculum and all that stuff. And so as a result, I tend to get really like passionate about what I choose and like, oh, this is the best. I just can't imagine using anything else, right? And so I get like that. And the problem is when the curriculum just doesn't work, when it doesn't work for my kids or when it just doesn't work for whatever reason, it's hard for me to let that go. So in today's video specifically, I am going to talk about why I switched from the math I loved, Singapore math, to Saxon math, which I'm excited about. And I will explain where this came from because it feels like a fairly large switch. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel if you are new here or welcome back if you've been coming for a while. I love making homeschool content for you guys and I love explaining why I make all the decisions when it comes to homeschooling. So where to start? Let's see. I think I'll start with kind of the backstory of our math journey with my oldest and then I'll get into kind of why I made the decision to go specifically with Saxon. So I actually did make a whole video talking a lot about this when I was talking about choosing math curriculum for my kindergartner at the time. So my firstborn, when he was five and a half, I think going into the fall, we went through three different curriculum programs that year. We started with Right Start Math, then we went to Math UC, and then we ended up at Singapore, specifically Dimensions Math. And I will link that video above so you can go check that out if you're interested. But I feel like that decision to go with Singapore Dimensions was really good. It fit him at the time. Right Start was just a bit too much, just too much, too many manipulatives, too much on me, especially with the current ages of my kids. Matthew C was just a little too dry and it was mastery, which I felt like maybe he needed mastery because right, right start really didn't work. But now I'm kind of questioning that. Anyway, and then we ended up at Singapore and I just really fell in love with the way Singapore math is taught. I love the big concepts. I love really deeply understanding math and using mental math so the kids could do a lot of the things in their heads and what they could do in their heads they truly understood it wasn't just like procedural if you will and so we were doing Singapore Dimensions KAKB program which I actually think I have a flip through which I will link above if you're interested and he was doing really pretty well with that he did struggle a bit with the number bond system which is kind of central to the Singapore method of teaching he just had a tough time, even when we used manipulatives to kind of understand, well, you could break up this stick of 10 blocks and you could make two and eight, three and seven, four and six, or you could go this way and it's four and six this way. And he would just be like, it, it just kind of overwhelmed him. But we kind of pushed through that and we ended up switching to Singapore primary math, the US edition. I just was struggling a bit with the way Dimensions was set up and their teacher's manual and that's shifted a little bit. So that's all well and good. But we did end up switching to the primary math, which I liked the home instructor's guide. I liked how it helped me teach him. So all that's good. And I feel like kind of the underlying message is that I, I liked the curriculum and it was one that was really good for me to teach, which is important as a teacher, mind you. But we kept kind of stumbling again with the addition and subtraction facts and the number bond system. So I was like, okay. So as we were in primary 1A, I'm like, let's just pump the brakes, take a break, and we'll do addition facts that stick and subtraction facts that stick. And we did, and he actually did really well with it. I need to kind of go back through and remind him, but he was able to visualize some of those ideas. It was just like one way of solving those types of problems. And he was able to do it. When we kind of stuck with that one way of doing things, he did well. And so I liked that. So I was like, okay, he's got his number facts now. So let's hop back into 1A. And so we did that when we started out the school year this year. And it just was a fail. I don't know how else to put it. Like he just didn't like it. I felt like he did a lot of guessing. I feel like he's a fairly logical kid. So then he would figure out something like, okay, well six plus seven equals 13. So that means that seven plus seven must equal 14. So he would do a lot of those kind of looking back and seeing that that was 13. So this must be 14, you know? And so it wasn't that he was like 
learning it. He was just learning little shortcuts that he could figure out how to get the answer, if that makes sense. And then we got to numbers to 20 and it was just not going well. And we were starting to addition and subtracting numbers to 20. And guys, okay, let me, let me see if I can explain this very well. So in the, the Singapore math program, say you can have something like 19 minus seven. And so it teaches that you can just subtract the ones, subtract the leftovers. And, and then you do like nine minus seven is two. And then you still have that 10 that you kind of put to the side. So that makes a total of 12. And what he learned is like, okay, he just needs to subtract this and add a one in front, which was fine. And so I don't think he totally got it, which I didn't realize until we started doing like something like 12 minus seven. So you couldn't sub just subtract the leftover, so it taught that you had to take the seven out of the 10. So you take 12 and make it 10 and two, and then from that 10, you take out the seven, there's three, three plus two equals five. So 12 minus seven equals five. He did not understand. And it's funny because I realized that the way subtraction facts that stick taught that, he understood better. He understood subtracting the sevens. We did a whole week on that. and. Then we got to the Singapore math and it taught just a number of different ways to do this and it was always kind of like moving things around or crossing things off and he would do that but then he would get to like a, a list of problems and he'd be like I have no idea how to do this. I don't know what it's asking for. I do not understand and I'd be like okay let's try and cross them out or you know I try and coach him and I try and do things different ways and I think in the end he was just getting overwhelmed. He was getting overwhelmed by all the different ways to think about it. He was getting overwhelmed because he had all these little tricks he was using to solve stuff, but they weren't actually the best way to do things. It's just the way he figured out how to get the answers, but it wasn't long-term, if that makes sense. So he didn't truly understand it. And then it just kind of made me stop. It made me stop and be like, Singapore math is great at mental math. It's great at giving you lots of ways to think about a different problem. It's great at making you really think about math and understand math. And it's exactly how I think. I have always done this with numbers. I mess them around in my head. I move them around. That's how I solve things. I can always do change in my head. Like I've always been gifted in math. So that made me think maybe that's why I was drawn to this program. And then I was thinking, maybe that's just not the way he thinks. And I had to come to terms with that because like in my head, I had worked up this program to be like, this is the best. This is the best way to teach math. He's gonna really understand it. But the thing is, is he was ending up on the floor in tears. He, the whole time he's saying, I don't understand what you're talking about. And I try and break it out a different way. I draw it, we'd get manipulatives. And he's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. And it was so hard. It was frustrating on my part because I just didn't know where to go from there. And it was frustrating because I was like, well, they're really giving you lots of different tools here. And he just didn't want any of those tools, if that makes sense. So it made me realize that like, I needed to let go of the curriculum and maybe try something else. And I hate the idea of jumping ship and curriculum hopping and like all that stuff. But I think there's a time and a place for it. And I think we had gotten there. And so it was time to switch. It's still so early in the year. I know some of you haven't even started and I'm already like, I'm making big changes, but that's just what I have to do. And so then I started looking around and I'm like, okay, the thing is, I feel like he needs maybe just a more traditional, straightforward approach to math, like stack them and add them sort of idea. Just carry the one, do all those things. Like I thought, well, maybe that will help him. And then we can use the tools he has learned from addition facts that stick and subtraction facts that stick to help him in those traditional ways of solving problems, I guess was what I was thinking. So that led me to a couple programs. That led me to like Saxon, which I'm gonna talk more about, Horizon. That led me to even look at BJU or Rebecca. Those are more traditional type programs. But in the end, I chose Saxon for a couple different reasons. I mean, the main ones are, it's traditional. It's very traditional. I mean, it's commonly used in schools. I probably learned using a Saxon type methodology. And so that was very appealing to me. I'm currently optimistic with the fact that it spirals. At first I wasn't sure if he liked a spiral approach, but I felt like he was getting such frustration when he hit like a roadblock on stuff he didn't understand that I was thinking, well, maybe if we kind of spiral it in, it'll be better. So I'm holding that loosely. I'm not quite sure which side he lands on that yet, but we're gonna try this. I also like it because it has lots of practice. 
Singapore really didn't. I mean, it had lots of other books and we would use all those, but intensive practice and challenging words practice, that felt like he had to actually understand it really well to use those books. And there was some extra books that were like extra practice books, but they were pretty much exactly what he was working with and he already wasn't understanding that. So I was just like, ah, I didn't know what to use. So Saxon has more problems, but I already know about myself that I am not tied to a curriculum. I don't feel really inclined to have to follow things to the T and make him do every single problem. I'm already pretty good at being like, hey, you already understand this. We're not gonna keep hammering this. We'll just move on. We'll skip that question or I'll pick the ones to make him do. I think that's a healthy approach to any curriculum. So I'm not worried about that because that's a common complaint of Saxon is there's just too much. I'm okay with weeding that out for myself and specifically for him. And the other thing which I've already mentioned is I think it works really well with addition facts that stick and subtraction facts that stick. And so that's why I decided on Saxon. I literally just went out and got it and we started it this past week and it's been great. I mean, so far so good. It'll take some getting used to and it's still a new curriculum so there's kind of that shiny aspect for him. So I'm expecting we'll get to a point when he is not as excited by it but I still think it'll be a good fit for him. So that is what we are doing with math. I mean, I am still on the fence and trying to decide what to do with my daughter. So she's six years old. I just started her in 1A for the Singapore primary program. And she's doing fine. She seems a little bit more math inclined than my son, but I'm honestly not sure if I wanna do two programs. That just sounds like a lot of work. I just have to be really conscious of that within myself, of like my capacity. Like, can I balance two completely different math programs? But then the part of me is like, but if she's good at it, I'd like to honor that and give her a program that she might be really good at. But I don't know. So let me know down below if any of you use different curriculums, especially math curriculums for your kids and how that goes. Is it pretty easy? Is it not? I'm still trying to decide what to do with her. But we've made the switch. We've switched to Saxon. And I'm going to give it a go because I think it'll fit him better. And I just have to do it. And I just have to trust my instinct that this is time. And the thing is, is I've done this before. If you've been on my channel before, I did this with Logic of English and All About Reading. I loved Logic of English. I still do. I am so behind the program. It just didn't work. And I'm so thankful I switched to All About Reading. It has been a wonderful program for my son. Wonderful. Like I love it so much. And I'm so glad I switched. I'm so glad I wasn't stubborn and like, was holding on to this idea of a great program because it is a great program. It's just not great for him. And so I'm hoping that we're kind of on a better path for math in a similar vein. So homeschooling, it's so humbling. It feels like I get stuff figured out and then I have to like be like, I'm gonna have to readjust that. I'm gonna have to let that go. So anyway, I would love to hear from you all. Have you done this? How do you feel about switching curriculums? I mean, let me know if you've done Saxon. I would love to hear that. I want to hear more thoughts and opinions on that as well, because I'm still kind of in the processing phase. And so anyway, that's what I have for this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next homeschooling video. All right. Have a wonderful day. Take care.